Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a specific wave equation solution. We're going to do an example of plucking a guitar string. Okay, we're just going to do a very simple example of this. Okay, so we have the PDE is going to be the wave equation. And we know that's going to be UTT is equal to C squared UXX. Okay, so let's do a specific version of this. So we're going to say that uh, we're going to leave C as a parameter. Okay. Uh, and we'll just let it, let's see what happens with C in the thing. The next thing we have to do is look at an initial condition. The initial position. Oh, the, I think the other thing we need to say is X is going to be on the domain zero to one. Again, that just keeps everything simple. And our initial position is going to be um, u at x comma zero is going to be equal to x times one minus x times a, and again a is just a parameter. Okay, it's just a parameter. And what does this what does this look like? Well, let's get a picture of it. It's going to look like, of course, a a parabola uh, that looks like that. Maybe I'll. Um, center this one up a little bit more. Kind of looks like that. So that'll be initial position. And the initial velocity, we're going to now say that this is ut is equal to zero. We're going to have a zero initial velocity. So the idea here is basically, if you were to take a, you know, a finger like that, and then bring your thumb down like that, and and pull up the string like that, and then all of a sudden at, at at t equals so here you pull up on the string and at t equals zero let it go. And of course, if you ever played a guitar, it works somewhat like that. You essentially are taking either your finger or a, a guitar pick. And you, and you scoop up the string and you pull it a little bit and then you let it slip off your finger and that gets it to vibrate. So this example is pretty, pretty on, on point in terms of uh, what, what's happening with a guitar string. Okay. All right. So we're, we know that, of course, uh, that this parameter C is going to equal the tension over the density of the string. Uh, 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 we know that's a, a... Sorry, it should be the square root of that. That's better. Uh, and then, okay, so with all those things put together, let's see if we can come up with a solution. So we know that, um, we know what we have to do is use separation of variables. So u of x comma t is going to be equal to p of x q of t. And we know if we plug it in, we get uh, q uh, double prime times p is equal to c squared uh, q p double prime. And then we divide everything uh, by Q and P, and we get the following. Q double prime over C squared Q is equal to P double prime over P. And then we set it equal to the constant lambda, which is going to be our eigenvalue. So we have this equation to deal with first. Um, we should note also that we have boundary conditions. So we have 0 a zero or what we call anchored uh, boundary conditions. So what we have here is P double prime is equal to lambda P with boundary conditions P at zero and P at one is equal to zero. Okay, so now let's put this together. See if you can figure this out. We know that uh, the PN of X solutions are going to be sinusoids, and it's going to be n pi x, and our lambda n's are going to be negative n pi quantity squared, okay? And this is going to go from n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, on up for forever, okay? And now we have to solve. So um, these eigenfunctions, of course, come from look up in the textbook, Or, or the ref sheet uh, for this 
common uh, eigen eigen function uh, set of solutions. Okay, so the next step comes to solve for the q n of t problem. So we have q double prime of n is equal to negative c squared times n pi quantity squared qn. Okay, so this has solutions. They're going to be trig. It's a second order problem. These trig solutions look like this. Okay, it's Q of T there. This is going to be equal to a n cosine n pi x. Oh, I, I did it again. It's n pi c t plus b n times the sine functions of n pi c t, like that. Again, these are for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, up for forever. So now we put together our general solution. is going to be u of x comma t. So that'll be the general solution will be the sum n equals 1 goes up to forever and you have sine n pi x times a n times cosine n pi c t plus b n sine n pi c t. Okay. So, of course, a n and b n are the free parameters. And they are also uh, Fourier coefficients. And so we'll talk about those in the next slide. So now the next piece of uh, work we have to do, of course, is determine those Fourier coefficients uh, via the initial condition. So we know that u of x comma 0 is equal to x times 1 minus x. And that's going to be equal to that sum, n starts at 1 and goes up to forever, of a n uh, times, and then of course cosine of n pi c times 0 is going to be equal to 1, and sine of n pi c times 0 is going to be equal to 0. So we're going to get n, a n times sine of n pi x. So we have to have a sine series. So a n are the uh, sine series coefficients. They're the sine series coefficients for x times 1 minus x. Okay, so let's come up with those Fourier coefficients. So the a n's are going to be equal to, we're going to look up in our tables, look up in our ref sheets, and we're going to find the formula for these coefficients. Um, it's going to be x times 1 minus x times sine n pi x dx. So you can go use a computer algebra system, Wolfram Alpha, or whatever you want. Um, you can do it by hand. It's not that hard. It would take you a page or two to get it. Um, let's let's skip all that and just uh, um, and just write down what we what we found. It's going to be two times cosine of n pi. Uh, plus 1 all over pi thirds to the third power. Okay, so that's the formula, but I can write this in a slightly more elegant way. That cosine of n pi, that's just going to be negative 1 to the n power, plus 1, all over pi thirds n uh, cubed. So pi, oh sorry, pi to the third power n to the third power. I should have said that instead. All right, so clearly this has a nice formula. It's going to be um, uh, uh, um, let's let's see here. It's it's going to be well. Let, what what's going on here? We have. I think we have. I think I made a mistake here in this formula. Oh, I found my error. It's right here. This There needs to be a negative sign there. So what we have here is an n plus 1. Okay, sorry. Back on track. We're in a good spot now. 
So what this means is, of course, it's going to be equal to, um, it's, it's going to be, um, so for n equals 1, well, let's just write it down here. It's going to be 4 over pi thirds times n cubed. Uh, and this is going to be for n odds, including n equals 1. Okay, and then it's going to be 0 for the n evens. Okay, so that makes it very clear. So what we have here then is the following. So our final solution, one thing I like to do, of course, anytime we have situations where we're skipping a bunch of the uh, coefficients, I, good, I think it's good to always abbreviate your sum. So the n is going to be equal to 2k minus 1. And then you say k is going to be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And what that does is just generate just the odd numbered n's, and you get the following formula. And now you start with k equals 1 and go up to forever. And then you have a 4 over pi cubed times 2k minus 1 cubed times, and this is going to be the cosine term uh, times 2k minus 1 times pi times ct times sine uh, at 2k minus 1 times pi times x. All right, so it should be noted, of course, that the bn terms are all going to be zero because we have zero uh, velocity initially. So initially we have zero velocity, and so we don't have any bn coefficients. Uh, so this is going to be our final answer. Um, let's now, I want to do a little bit of analysis of this solution, what's going on here, and we, what we really want to do is look at that power spectrum. We want to look at the energy spectrum. So we have to look at the energy spectrum and see what's going on here. So if we have the energy spectrum, if we're looking at those ANs, we're actually the 2K well, let, let, yeah, the 2k minus 1 is going to be equal to 4 over... Uh, now, if we square it, that's going to be... That's going to be 16. That's 4 squared. Over pi cubed, when we square it, we're going to get pi to the 6th power uh, times 2k minus 1 to the 6th power. All right, so what we have here, if we look on the n, of course, we're going to have some power there. And then it's going to get dramatic, and then it goes down to zero. So this is n equals one, and then n equals two, you get nothing. When you get n equals three, whatever that is, it's going to be tiny. Tiny compared to whatever the n equals one was. And like that, and once you go to four, it's going to be zero again. And then when you go to five, it's going to be essentially, it's essentially going to be so tiny, you won't even be able to probably see it on the same scale of graph. So here, this is now the energy spectrum. So this is E, F of N, right? The energy spectrum. Okay, this is the energy spectrum for, for, for the X times one minus X uh, initial condition, or what I call the initial position. So what this says is basically nearly all the oscillatory tori energy is in the n equals 1 oscillating mode. So let's look at that. So again, the base note uh, or, or I shouldn't call it the base um, because that's another term that's used in, 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 in music. So the note, the primary, the primary note uh, of this is going to be or has frequency has frequency and it's going to be that n equals 1. 
So it's going to be <clears throat> pi times c is going to be the frequency. Is going to be the frequency, okay? And, and that's going to be in radians uh, uh, per second. Uh, okay, um, so that'll be the, the primary frequency there. Um, but now if I want to talk about, um, if I want to talk about uh, what, what it is in hertz, I have to, of course, divide by 2. I'm going to get C over 2 is going to be the, uh, the, the hertz frequency, provided T is in, is a, provided T is seconds. Okay, so that is going to be your frequency in hertz. So remember, C is equal to root T C over rho. So of course, you can tune T C in rho to be whatever you need it to be to be that primary frequency. So it should be noted, though, that there is another frequency. There is that harmonic, that harmonic, the first harmonic. But that harmonic is tiny. Most of what you hear in the music is going to be that primary pure tone coming from the, that, that, that N equals 1 mode. The first harmonic is almost insignificant. You don't hear very much of it at all. Uh, uh, it, you know, that's going to show up in, in, in some sort of background, uh, a note that's there, but mostly what you're going to hear is hear the, the pure tone of frequency C over two, uh, coming out of this guitar string due to that particular initial condition of the bowed shape. And of course this is realistic, uh, uh, uh a realistic way in which you'd pluck a guitar string. Okay, so I hope this gives you a good insight into uh, how the wave equation can inform oscillating frequencies, how, how a string vibrates, and, and what components of the different solutions show up in a particular solution, and how you can analyze the system to find out, you know, what, what is this, 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 this note going to sound like? What is this string going to sound like? What are the dominant tones in that, in that vibration? All right. Well, I hope that helps and I'll see you in the next video.